So has your child watched TV the entire day? Yep, guilty. <laughs> but as I've grown, I've realized that there are so many negative side effects of watching too much TV. Uh. Welcome to Plan Prep Pray. Hey girly, my name is Wendy and I am a homeschooling stay-at-home mom of four little ones and I talk about all things kids empowerment, homeschooling, homemaking, and mommy self-care. So please subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss a thing. In our house, what we've done is we've implemented a family technology contract. We learned about this through Positive Parenting, which is a course that we took. I will link them down below. I'm joined today by my little one, so you might hear her in the background. All right, let's go. So in this video, I'll be talking about some of the things that have really helped us to implement our family technology contract and some of the different things that we look at when developing a family technology contract. Stay to the end because I've got a freebie for you. So the first thing before you even implement a family technology contract is to realize that you're going to have to set limits for yourself as the parent. You're going to have to lead by example. So if you don't expect your children to be on technology all day, you can't be on technology all day either. So it's very important to not be a hypocrite. I know children recognize hypocrisy from a mile away. So you wanna make sure that you implement or that you have some restrictions on how often you're on your phone or computer or whatever the situation is as well. Technology is a privilege, so let's establish that as the foundation. It is not a right. Children are not entitled to technology, so that needs to be the primary foundation. It is a privilege that is earned, not a right that is um, a requirement. Now, you can't have buy-in without weigh-in. So in our home, when it came to establishing a family technology contract, we sit all of our children down. So we work together to come up with the family technology contract. Technology should be in a shared space. Technology shouldn't be utilized behind closed doors, especially when it comes to children. There's way too much happening on the internet and just in the social media aspect of things that when you close doors, you really open gateways for things to sneak in without you even knowing. Now, no screens in cars. No screens while eating. It's very important that there are just places where there's no screens. So I would definitely make sure that there are certain limits to where screens are utilized. I believe that in a car, it's just the perfect time to talk, to socialize with your children, to answer their questions, listen to their heart, teach them how to get the grandma's house. Like it's not the time to be so screen focused that you can't even be a part of the world and be present. So I definitely recommend no screens in cars. Now, when it comes to eating, research has shown that increased technology is causing increased obesity in our children. So with us, we want our children to know when they're full and what happens when you're eating, eating, eating while um, on technology, you don't even realize when you're full. You just keep overeating. So they know there's no snacks, there's no anything while you, you, your technology is on. So you turn that off, then you sit down at the table and you eat. Be consistent with the screen time rules. Every single day, the screen rules cannot change or else they're really not rules. They're kind of like suggestions depending on how mommy and daddy are feeling. No, be consistent. If we don't do screens during the week and we only do them on the weekend, then we don't do screens during the week and we only do them on the weekends. 
even if it's the summer. So make sure that the rules that you come up with are rules that you want to keep for the long haul, or at least until the kids get older and situations change. Utilize a screen-free day. Like we love our screen-free days because it forces us to be creative, to do something extra fun, to do something extra special. So we have screen-free Fridays where there's no tablets or anything like that. So we will do dance parties. and go in the pool and go outside. Like we just have to keep moving and keep, you know, or we'll play together, build blocks or whatever the situation is. But it just forces you to take a step back and just focus on entertainment through other means or being bored. It's okay to be bored. Now the tablets come with parental restrictions. So does the TV and it's amazing. Use it. Our tablets don't turn on and they will not work until three o'clock. And guess what? They turn off at 6 p.m. and they will not work after that. And so you're not the bad guy, the tablet is the bad guy. <laughs> it helps to really um, help children empower themselves by you not being the one that constantly has to manage everything, but to have the technology manage itself is, amazing. Watch TV with your kids. Play games with them. Now, if you're watching TV with them and you see something that you don't like or that really goes against your family values, then that's a perfect opportunity to pause the TV and get in their hearts. Um, hey, did you see what Joe just did? Do you think that that was okay to talk to his mom like that? That was okay to, um, to act that way? How would you react differently? You know, it brings technology alive and it allows it to not just be something that's constantly pouring into our children, but something that we can even utilize to build character, something that we can even utilize to help them recognize when they see wrong and to do different. Just a thought. So you may not even have thought about this, but for us, we utilize a charging station. So for us, everything gets charged in one area. And that is our children's responsibility. It's part of their nighttime routine to put their things on the charger. It's, it's their things, so they should be responsible for it. And guess what? If it's not charged, that's not my problem. So Rebe, I got our family technology contract for you in a version that you can edit it. And all you have to do is click on the link down below, sign up for the email list, and I'll go ahead and send that to you. You're welcome. <laughs> so question of the day, do you have a TV in your home? Probably yes, right? But could you live without one? Because in our home for the past year, we have not had a TV. What we utilize is a projector. And just the extra step of having to set up that projector, we're not doing it. So unless it's like a family movie night or something like that, it has really limited the amount of TV usage in our home. So let me know, could you live without one? Thank you for joining me today. Please subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I'll see you next time. Bye. One video. <laughs> I pray. <laughs> that. <laughs> okay. That sounded so awkward. The door opened. God. Okay, if that made sense, but that's what I'm gonna say. I'm gonna stick with it. Scrap tape, don't, don't use that. Okay. I said that already. Let's do all that again, because that was weird. Oh! Okay. That was weird. Bathroom just flushed. Is amazing.